Shalom. I'm back. Um, this is going to be a briefer message. Okay. Um, let us pray. Abba, yeah, we just thank you for this day that you've given us, that you've blessed us with. And I pray that as I share this message to your people and to those um, who are called by your name and to those who will be called by your name, I pray it be edifying. Pray it once again, they go, go back and study to show themselves approved and um, get confirmation through your will, Kakodesh. And I thank you for this word. May it come forth without delay. May it come forth without interruptions. Pray all these things in Yehoshua's name, Yehoshua HaMashiach HaNazari. Amen. Okay, so the title of this message is The Feast of Sukkot Tabernacle and its Connection to the Wedding and Marriage Supper of the Lamb. Now, I hope you understand that the wedding and the marriage supper of the Lamb are two different things, okay? Just like with any typical traditional um, marriage marital ceremonies, you have an actual wedding and then you have a reception. OK, so the wedding is the actual wedding and the reception is what it is, a reception after the wedding. So we know that wedding receptions usually occur, you know, right after the wedding. If you're dealing with um, Middle Eastern culture, um, I think typically it lasts about seven days for a wedding reception. Um, I think maybe in the book of Tobi Tobit, um, Tobia, it might be uh, depending on. A family might do it for 14 days. So, you know, it just depends. But you have the wedding and then you have the reception, which lasts many days in Middle Eastern culture. All right. So there's a question I had in my mind for many, many years. And um, Abba gave me understanding by his Ruach what this actually meant. So the question that I had was, why must all the nations of the earth celebrate the Feast of Sukkot annually during the millennial reign. Why must they? Okay. I'll read from Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. And it reads, And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of the nations, which came against Jerusalem, shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, Yehovah of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Sukkot, that's the Feast of Tabernacles, verse 17. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship King Yehovah of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And you can continue to read it on, but that's just the basis. So if the people, the families of the earth of all nations do not come up during the millennial reign, during that thousand year reign, they don't come up for the Feast of Tabernacle. They will not receive any rain. So if Egypt, the people of Egypt do not come up to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, they don't receive rain. If, um, you know, another land or country don't come up, they won't receive rain. And so to answer this question, with everything that Yah has been teaching me, um, he's helped me to understand that the reason why this feast is so important, why all the nations must celebrate this feast. It is about the wedding, and it's about the wedding supper of the lamb. Okay, it's like a, it's like a wedding anniversary. Okay, you come up every year for the wedding anniversary, and if you don't, you're gonna get in trouble. Now, this wedding anniversary is not just any typical wedding anniversary. This wedding anniversary, or really the wedding itself, commemorates the uniting of the the kingdom of Israel from the house of Yehuda and the house of Israel being brought back as one. As I mentioned, um, the Obviously, Yehoshua is of the tribe of Yehuda, of the house of Yehuda, of the lineage of King David, and the bride is of the house of Israel, namely, as I mentioned in my other videos, um, of the tribe of Naphtali um, from King Hiram's lineage. Remember about the brotherly covenant videos? If you go back and see, you'll see that's what I was referring to, the, the ones about the brotherly covenant. Okay, so I wrote, because this feast commemorates the restoration and establishment of the United Kingdom of Israel via the Kingdom Marriage Alliance of Yehoshua of the tribe of Yehuda from the lineage of King David and his wife of the former Northern Kingdom of, the, um, of Israel of the tribe of Naphtali, which upheld the brotherly covenant between King Sholomo and King Hiram of Zor, if the nations do not come up, do not uh, yeah, do not come up for this annual yearly wedding anniversary at the Feast of Tabernacle. They shall suffer a plague for one whole year due to no rain. Okay. 
Um, and uh, the image that Abba gave me, this is from some scripture verses, and I'm not going to go into detail with it just yet. Um, but the imagery, I was reading some other um, scriptures from other prophets, the major prophets in the scriptures. And one of the um, texts gave me this image, okay, that the Heavenly Father will be conducting this wedding. The Heavenly Father is the one who selects the bride for Yehoshua, and he is the one who will conduct this wedding, okay, uh, between the lamb and his bride. Now, this, um, I'm going to share a message from a sister in Messiah, Janine Shepherd, and I posted in my community post. You can see more of what she said. But um, what you'll see here is that the Heavenly Father is conducting the wedding, and he will take the hand of the bridegroom, the hand of the lamb, and the hand of the bride, and he will put them together in his hand. So like a father bringing two hands together and saying, okay, now I'm going to talk to you both, okay, because it's a wedding, right? Now this is the image. This is what the message that she received, all right? Um, the wedding of the lamb. She received this message. This is what she witnessed, okay? And I'm going to explain just a little bit of what, she's, um, what she received here. But the message that she received was this. Um, okay. Once again, I will have to edit. I will have to edit, edit, edit this video. Oh, edit this video. Edit, 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 edit. All right. Woo! Okay. Sorry about that. Yes, I will. I'm editing this video. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go back to the message. This was actually posted today from her, Janine Shepard, um, on May 24th, 2024. The Wedding of the Lamb. Message. I, the Father, have entrusted you to one another. If you want to love and honor each other as married couples and conduct your marriage according to my commandment and promise in good and bad days for the rest of eternity, then answer yes with the help of my Father. Now, in reply, she says, Yehoshua, of course she uses the J word, but Ye Yeshua speaking and says, Yes, with the help of my father. So he's answering. Okay, so it's probably like face to face with the bride. And he's answering the father and saying, yes, with the help of my father, you are flesh of my flesh, bone of my bones. I will love and honor you until eternity. Death will not separate us. What about you, Lady Rosalita? Okay, which means little rose. And that was the end of the message. Yehoshua, the Messiah, the Nazarene. Okay, now. Keep in mind that the Lady Rosalita means little rose, and it's referring to Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1, where the bride declares herself as the Rose of Sharon. Now, remember, you go back into Song of Solomon, she says, I am the Rose of Sharon. So in this case, where she's witnessing in the spiritual realm, is Jehoshua saying to calling her Lady Rosalita, meaning Lady Little Rose, okay, based off of her calling herself the Rose of Sharon. All right. Um, also, you see here that when the Heavenly Father is speaking in this message, he says, if you want to love and honor each other as married couples, okay, married couples, that's the key word that's being used here, married couples, okay, this is not Yehoshua marrying multiple, you know, women or, you know, uh, women and men and children, okay, <laughs> all right, you know, married couples is what, two, all right, so anyway, um, so that's the message there. Go ahead and look at the community post and you'll see some really, really cool, 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 interesting things. Um, she's got a wonderful um, uh, YouTube channel. Um, I was mentioning to her often and whatnot, but I just want to share that. That was pretty much confirmation from some scripture verses that I read last week that um, was just like, wow, that's, that's exactly what I was seeing from reading the, the book, that particular chapter in one of the book of the prophets. That's it. And I think uh, book of a, I'm sorry, pardon the noise, the book of Ezekiel. Okay. With that, I'm going to say shalom, shalom, shalom. I got some other things to handle. Shalom, 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 shalom.